This is a controller and this is an entire mini PC. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. I'm not making this comparison because they do the same things. I'm comparing them because look at the size. Now we've got PCs that are basically the same size as the controller <laughs> for your consoles. Now what we're looking at here is called the Geekom Mini IT11. Most of you are probably thinking one thing. Can I play games on it? And the answer is, you can play some games on it. If you've ever been in a situation where you're like, I wish my devices could do more. I wish my home were a little bit smarter. This might actually be the perfect solution. And the reason is not because of what's on the inside, it's because of the outside. Look how small this device is. My hands are basically bigger than this device. This is the size of my hand and this is the size of the device. Some people will be interested, can it play games? Because you might also want to do some gaming on it. But basically, if I were you and you were wondering, why should I buy a mini PC? Well, let's go through the reasons right now. Now, first of all, I just want to disclaim, they sent this to me for the purposes of this video. I don't have to send it back, but all opinions are my own. Reason number one, because you might want to just take up less space on your desk. This is a MacBook Air. It's one of the smallest Macs that you can buy and it's still significantly larger than this. Basically, this can do a lot of what this can do. It's more for like word processing, spreadsheets, showing photographic uh, screensavers or just web browsing or watching TV, watching YouTube. If you were to plug something like this into your TV to do that, you've only got two USB-C ports. If you go for something like this, not only does it take up very little space on your desk, Look at the I.O. on this device. Power input, you've got display port, you've got a LAN port for wired Ethernet, you've got two USB-A ports, USB-C, which I believe is actually USB 4.0, not Thunderbolt, and you've got a full-size uh, HDMI port. Then you flip it over to the other side and you've got another USB, I believe, for USB-C port, another USB-A port, and you've got a headphone speaker output. And then on another side, you've got a full-size SD card slot. So that's already like a dozen more ports than you get on something like your average laptop, which remember, it's not designed to sit on your desk and be plugged into a monitor. You're supposed to use your laptop with the screen. You're supposed to open it up, use the keyboard, use the built-in mouse, use the built-in screen. You don't get that on the Geekom. You got no screen, you get no keyboard, you get no mouse. You're buying this because it doesn't have those things. You're buying this because you don't want that large extra stuff taking up space because you're going to use external stuff anyway. Reason number two you might want to go for a mini PC is that it's easier to customize. You just take this bottom plate off and you get access to the RAM. You can swap that out manually and I believe it's also quite easy to swap out the SSD if you want a larger NVMe PCIe type N.2 uh, SSD. Very easy to swap a larger one or a faster one or just if it breaks just to replace it with a new one. The MacBook Air is not really a good example because this is not a computer that's designed to be <laughs> very consumer friendly when it comes to maintenance. But again, even for many other brands and Windows PCs, because they're trying to make them so small, they can be quite difficult to modify without unplugging ribbon cables for the battery and taking out other components so that you can access the RAM which is underneath other components. Reason number three you might want to go for a mini PC is again something that it doesn't have. This does not have an internal battery. You plug it in and you use it. Now the benefit of not having a battery is twofold. The first one is batteries heat up when they're charging. I've had mini PCs and pocket PCs and foldable PCs and often one of the issues is not just that it's not very fast, it's that they thermal throttle when charging. So they can actually be faster when they're discharging the battery and just running on battery power. But when you plug it in, in theory, you should be able to get higher TDPs and run the device at a faster speed, right? Well, if there's a battery on the inside and it hasn't been designed with good cooling, sometimes charging the battery will make the whole device so hot that it actually thermal throttles and it runs slower when plugged in. 
not if you have a PC, a mini PC that doesn't have a battery. The other reason why you might not want a battery is because they're just a bother. I've had multiple laptops over the years that I just cannot use anymore because the battery has inflated to the point that often the base cover of your computer will just pop off the computer. So it'll be like not even safe to use anymore. Reason number four, and this is quite specific to computers that look like this, is the fact that the Geekom Mini IT11 comes with a mounting bracket. Completely hidden behind the monitor, you would never know that there was a PC plugged into this thing. And so in a way, it's a little bit like having one of those all-in-one PCs where you basically only show people the screen. It's just like, whoa, your desk is so clean, there's no PC there at all. But there is one downside to this situation, and it's the fact that this mount on the back, the VESA mount, this is actually designed for mounting the monitor on a stand. The fact that this PC is now here means you can't use the VESA mount for a monitor stand, even something like this built-in stand that came with this portable monitor. It doesn't need to be using the VESA mount, but how do I use this stand now? I don't know, I feel like that's something that needed to be considered. So those are the reasons why you might want to go for a mini PC instead of a laptop. But now let's talk about why you might not want to go for a mini PC. Reason number one, gaming. Now, of course, they've put some impressive components in here. It's not the latest gen processors, it's Intel 11th gen processors. But this particular unit retails for $780. That's a $780 computer with no screen, no battery, no keyboard, no mouse, and it doesn't really play games. Now, of course, there are hundreds and hundreds of games that are low powered that you can play on this, but something like Street Fighter 6, which is a modern game and actually does run on even the PlayStation 4, you cannot get a stable frame rate in something like Street Fighter 6, even on the lowest, lowest setting. If you only play some casual puzzle games and you're you know, basically using this as your media center downstairs in the living room, you might think after watching a movie, maybe I'll have a few rounds of Tetris or Puyo Puyo or something simple. That will be fine. Pretty much every other game though, this is not it. If you're running emulators, however, many emulators just need a fast processor, that would probably be fine. As you know, I don't really cover emulators on this channel, so I'm not gonna show you any, but you already know whether an Intel i7 11th gen processor can run your emulator, so do whatever you want with it. Reason number two you might not need a mini PC is if you think that you're going to go traveling with it. I have heard that some people like to carry around a mini PC with them so that they can do editing work on the go. If you're in a hotel room and you're editing, what are you plugging into? Do you even have a TV in your hotel room? And even though most hotel rooms have TVs, are you, do you have access to the HDMI port? Do you really want a mini PC when you're in a hotel when if you had a laptop, you could just open it <laughs> and use the built-in screen and use the built-in keyboard and the built-in mouse to do your editing. The only reason you would want to bring a mini PC with you to a hotel room to do editing on the go is if it had better specs than a laptop. Let's say you don't like the laptop versions of graphics cards, like the M versions that used to come out. If you built a mini PC, so maybe something larger than this, you could have an actual discrete graphics card, but this does not have a discrete graphics card. Reason number three why you might not want this mini PC is price. Like I mentioned before, there are some cheaper models, but the one that they've sent to me with an Intel i7 11th gen processor, pretty standard, pretty fast. That'll run you $780 for this unit. Now, literally right now, as I'm making this video, there is a summer sale on, and so it's, the, it's actually discounted from $780 to $500, so, that's a pretty significant savings. But I don't know, at $500, I'm still not 100% sure if this is the right option for you if you want to play games or if you need a machine that can actually open up with a screen and be usable without an external monitor. Nine times out of 10, I think you're going to be better off with one of these RDNA 3 handhelds like the Asus ROG Ally, which I think there are two variants. There's a $600 model and a $700 model. So both cheaper than this and they have RDNA 3 graphics built in. So they can run pretty much 
everything that I own on Steam, maybe not ultra settings, but they can run a lot of those, pretty much all of those games, and some of them it can run at 120 hertz. With no graphics card, I'm lucky if I can run any games at even 40 FPS on a device like this. So those are some reasons why you would and would not want to buy a mini PC like this, the Mini IT11 from Geekom. It's really impressive when you think about it, but the purchase proposition of this computer is a little bit difficult now that we are in the age of Steam Deck and the Ally. Handhelds like the Ally run Windows 11 and are also completely capable of running pretty much anything you can throw at it in terms of your Steam library. Again, not at ultra settings, but it can play them. For more money and arguably not even more portable than a handheld like the ROG Ally, you don't get a graphics card and basically don't even get a screen. In fact, if I want to do anything with this at all, I have to plug it into power, plug it into or use wireless keyboard and mouse, and then also plug it into a display. There's a lot of extra stuff I have to do just to use it. If it had something like the RDNA 3 graphics of the Asus Ally, at the same price, then I might actually choose this over a handheld. Why? Because I don't need the screen, I don't need it to be complicated, I don't want the built-in controls to get in my way. Sometimes when I'm playing on the Ally built-in, it's like, do I want to use my built-in controls or do I want to use the controller you plugged into me? It's like, just use the controller I plugged into you. Ignore all your built-in stuff, like your built-in battery, like your built-in controls, like your built-in screen. There's so much built-in stuff I want you to ignore. Fortunately, with a PC like this, there is no built-in stuff to ignore. It's just, I'm just a PC, I'm just gonna use the things that you plugged into me. Being straightforward like that is awesome, but the only thing holding me back from actually using this and making this like something that I plug into my living room TV is the fact that it doesn't have discrete graphics or built onboard graphics that are like the RDNA 3 and the Asus Ally. So maybe a few years ago, the proposition of a mini PC in this form factor was actually quite enticing. But now that we have gaming handhelds, which are able to play games if you want to, but also do everything that this can do, apart from the reasons I listed at the beginning of this video, I can't see much reason to go for this over a gaming handheld. So that's pretty much it for the Geekom Mini IT11. I think it's impressive for what it is, but it was designed for a form factor that we wanted a few years ago. And now that we've got gaming handhelds with docking stations, it's kind of difficult to justify something like this. That being said, all the reasons I listed at the beginning of this video are genuine reasons why you might want to choose this over something like a gaming laptop or one of these gaming handhelds. If you buy it during the summer sale, which is like $280 off or something similar, might actually be well worth it. And it's a computer that you can hang on the back of your monitor and hide it away where no one will see it. So it could actually be the perfect thing for the living room. But if you're a gamer and remember, this is a channel where we cover mostly games, you've got to ask yourself, do I really want to spend $500 on a computer that can't really play very much? That's up to you to decide. Subscribe if you loved it, like the video if you haven't done so already, and comment below on what you think is the best use case for a mini PC like this. Even if it can't play games, are there specific things that you can do with this that you wouldn't really be able to do realistically with a large laptop or a gaming handheld? Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. I've been Nihongo Gamer, and I'll see you real, real soon.